It's the middle of July and our garden is finally in full swing after a slow start. We've expanded by about 800 square feet and have even started planning for our fall garden. I'm so excited to give you an update and show you how all of our vegetables, herbs, and flowers are doing. All of our tomatoes are doing wonderful this year. The other day, Ben came out and pruned them. We like to prune them pretty bare, keep the top leaves on and prune a lot off the bottom and the suckers as well. That way we can keep any blight out, see if there's any bug issues going on. We have so many tomatoes on the vine right now. None have ripened yet. It's gonna be a very exciting day as soon as all of them start ripening and turning red and very busy one as well. This area was where we had the most tomato volunteers. This little back corner, we kind of just let everything go last season. So we had tons and tons and tons of them. What we ended up doing with the tomato volunteers was pulling them up and we came along our fence and planted them all here. We didn't put them in water or anything to root out first. It might be too late in the season to do this, but we had so many extras. And if we could get any extra tomatoes for sauce making, canning, anything this season, we wanna get what we can from them. A new one also that we've never grown before, but I love salsa verde is tomatillos. And these two we got from a nursery. They were growing a little weird. This one was going more out than up which I haven't looked into how tomatillos grow, so that could be it. I just assumed they were very similar to tomatoes. But they've already started forming their little paper shells to start growing inside them, so hopefully we'll have a lot of salsa verde too. If you remember one of our earlier videos, we planted some garlic in the spring. Our June garden tour, it looked really well. Come to find out that no bulbs formed at all in any of them. So, we do have good news. We have a ton of tomato volunteers from last year. So this is where our spring garlic was planted and we have five, six, seven multiple volunteers just in this spot alone. And also in our other tomato trellis on the other side of this one, we have multiple volunteers there. One that decided to come up here and our onions, the onion sets these are yellow Parma onions that I started indoors earlier this spring when it was still cold out. They're doing the best by far. I started some other white and red onion sets inside and they haven't done much, but as you can see, these yellow ones, some of them are huge already, which is great. My calendula that I had started indoors was teeny tiny and I thought that it was never gonna take off. She has started producing <laughs> very big. Got multiple blooms each day. And then all in front, I didn't think these were going to take off either, but these are marshmallow plants. So next year I will be able to harvest the roots for them for tea. And then I filled in just with some beans around it. Had some open spots, so trying to get things in as I can. And then speaking of beans, our beans have been a little weird this year. This is our main green bean bed, the one we started with. And as you can see, the half closest to me is doing really well. And then the other half over here has some beans, but the plants themselves just came up, but then that's it. These were all planted at the same time. And some of them are still very small, no flowers, nothing. I have two different varieties in here. I don't believe we have any beans on these yet. The ones with the more purple pods are a purple bean that when cooked turn green. And then the ones here in the back are just regular old green beans. Speaking of beans, we have also planted even more of them later. We've never grown our own dried black beans before, but we're very interested in it. So we ordered some seeds later than normal and we planted some in this whole area, the rest of the garlic area. And we finally have some of them starting to sprout. 
With the zone that we're in, we're kind of right on the line on the amount of days that they come to harvest from the day we planted them. So we're just kind of saying our prayers that the season, our frost we get this fall ends up being a little bit later. So we'll have time to harvest all of our black beans. This is one of our sets of pepper beds. We started all of these peppers from seed inside. They are all bell peppers, two different varieties. And we were out here pulling some weeds the other day and I didn't think we had any yet. And finally saw our very first little green pepper coming on. And then the rest are all coated in flowers. So hopefully they'll start producing here soon as well. This back wall, I've never grown sunflowers before, and it amazes me how fast they grow once they came up. So hopefully these few that have popped up will be giant mammoth sunflowers by the end of the summer for us. And then we have all of our zucchini plants. Last year we planted, I think less than this amount, and we had way too many zucchinis. So this season I said I was only gonna plant two and we have eight, <laughs> but I couldn't resist because last year we only had green zucchinis and I wanted to have yellow also. So these four are yellow and we actually have our first one that is coming on is a yellow one. And there's a second one right there too. It's amazing to me how big and they look like plants from the dinosaur era or something. The zucchinis get crazy. Oh, this whole back row is our potatoes. And some of them were starting to look more yellow. We had a lot of dry weather, hardly any rain there for a couple of weeks. And as soon as we got a bunch of rain these last few days, everything greened right back up. A lot of them have flowers on them. So hopefully we'll get a potato harvest this year. Last year, we weren't as lucky. We tried growing them in containers and they got blight or some kind of disease. We weren't sure what happened, but they were only about that big and had spots all over them. So we're hopeful this year that we will have nice potatoes to store. We have a random cabbage plant that popped up and is getting eaten alive by something, but I'm just gonna leave him so Whatever's eating it keeps eating that instead of anything else in the garden. <laughs> and then our two-year-old was excited to come plant some things. So we planted just a few different watermelons. Down here, we planted some pie pumpkins, which I use a lot of pumpkin for baking. So I'm excited to be able to hopefully have some of our own pie pumpkins to freeze and use the filling. Along with our patch of black beans that we added back where the garlic was, these dark spots, if you can't see, are also all black beans. We realized that we had a lot more empty space in our garden than we thought we did. So we wanted to fill in where we could to get as much as we could out of the space that we have. And we planted some red onion sets fairly late in the season too. A lot of them sprouted at first, but this is kind of all that's left. So we have a few that are doing well. We're grateful for the ones that have come up and stuck around because we will gladly eat them. My herb bed is doing somewhat better than it was earlier. My basils have taken off a lot more. They've started to flower, but I learned that you can trim them and then they will just keep going. So I'm trying to keep them going as long as I can or at least until we get some tomatoes. I have calendula planted in here too that also looked fairly weak, but now it's starting to look like the blooming calendula did before it really took off and started to bloom. And my chamomile that I started from seed is definitely taking off and blooming, as you can see. I've already started picking a little bit here and there because I can't help myself putting it in the dehydrator for tea. And I have more marshmallow planted in here as well. And then some other herbs like sage and dill that have also started taking off here just since getting all that rain and being a little bit later in the season now. Our carrots are doing really well too. It amazes me how long they take to germinate sometimes. We still have some that have just started germinating. They've been in there well over 30 days, but they can take their time. We will gladly eat them and use them whenever they decide to come up too. And my dream garden entrance is finally starting to look a little bit prettier. We actually have, oh, it's a butterfly. <laughs> Zinnias that are blooming now. 
all different kinds of colors. It's I planted them very thick and it's just strange how in some spots nothing came up or they're still fairly short and then other spots they're going crazy, but I'll take them. And then I planted sunflowers, the same variety on each side. And these guys are still coming up too, just very teeny. And these ones are doing well. They look a lot like the ones in the back of the garden. We got some peppers from a nursery and I didn't think they were doing too well. Not I don't think, they aren't doing too well. They're really, really small. They're all crinkly. This one actually has a pepper on it. I don't remember the varieties of them. I just know they're hot peppers. So hopefully they start taking off. We'll have to see how they go. I also got some small okra plants that looked very weak, but they are starting to produce now too and leafing out a lot more and look much healthier. So maybe they just needed to acclimate or had a long state of shock. This one's doing really well. His leaves are nice and big. Our celery which I'd never planted or grown before, is doing really well also. I have came and harvested a few little pieces off just for small celery. And my friend told me that I need to, or if I would like them to grow more together to tie them up like that, I'll probably come try that with them here to get more of a big head stalk of celery. Our Roma tomatoes are doing very well also. Not sure, oh yeah, we do have a few small ones formed already, a ton of flowers on all of them as well. And then up here is the other part of our bell peppers that we'd started indoors from seed. I believe it was these two, our jalapenos, and then all the rest are bell peppers. Some look a little stronger than others, but they're still doing okay. And we also planted some of more of the red onion sets here in this area, and all of them had come up, and we only have maybe three little guys that are left there. Well, down here, we had peas that didn't do too well, so I ended up ripping them out. I got harvested what I could off of them. I planted Cherokee Trail of Tear beans here, and they have finally started to sprout. I was just out here the other day and nothing, so that's great they're coming up. Still have a few pea plants that we're hanging on to, still getting pods on them. On the back side of this trellis, I had planted all cucumbers. And this was the only one that sprouted for me and she is doing great. She's got blossoms all on the other side, maybe some cucumbers too. We have all these other tomatoes here that we have filled in with, with any open spot we have pretty much. So hopefully the cucumbers won't drown them out too much because I did come back in and plant more cucumbers. The two year old and I really like pickles, so They've started to sprout, so I'm hoping we'll have enough to make us a good batch of pickles this year. And then also right at Ben's feet is another big patch of black beans that we planted. You can see that Ben is much more organized than I am by the other plots of beans because this is the one that I planted and his are nice and lined up and straight, but they're all gonna grow beans, so. With all of our volunteer tomatoes, we thought we're mostly on that side. This one decided to come up in the perfect spot, so he'll get tied to the trellis when he comes up. This is another one of our more failures. These are pole beans that I'm not sure what, we've been using fertilizer and they don't have any bug damage anymore, but they just aren't doing so hot. There's a few of the plants that have attached and are getting stronger and bigger, but the majority of them just yellowed out and weren't having it. I had all of my collards here that looked just like the cabbage, like Swiss cheese. Something was getting them and they were too big. So I ended up ripping them out and we went and tried to feed them to the chickens, but they wanted nothing to do with them. And we still have more peas on the other side that are doing really well. Tomato plant here, some cilantro that is going to seed and turn it into coriander and I'm just letting him do his own thing and hopefully next year we'll have a whole bunch of cilantro right here. Another random calendula stuck in from seed should hopefully be coming up soon. And then back here is a different variety of pole beans and they look better than the one up front. When I was out here the other day, they didn't look as well, but a lot of them look better. 
Probably gonna use the peas for help to climb on up. That's fine with me. That extra 800 square foot garden I was telling you about, it's right here outside of our main garden. This is obviously a brand new tilled space. We eventually want to get wood chips added to it to also make it no dig. And this is the reason why. The time of weeding we have spent in the main garden, this has shown us what it would be like if we did not do the no dig method. And for us, this we don't wanna weed this much or let this much go. So it's doing well so far. The grass is doing great, that's coming back up in it. The majority of the empty spots where the grass is, we have planted carrots. We had a lot of carrot seeds and are very excited for them to come up, but it hasn't even been, I think, two, three full weeks yet. So we just haven't had any carrots germinate for us yet in this space. We have planted a lot more green beans and those are all coming up have come up, the majority of them so far. None of them have started to flower yet as we did plant them late, but they were all around 55 day varieties, so they will start coming up here soon as well. The main reason I asked Ben to till this whole giant new garden space for me was to have lots of extra room for squash and melons. Amongst the grass, you can see, we do have some different varieties of watermelon. Also, I believe some honeydew and some, as we like to say in Indiana, musk melons coming up. And then back here, we have some spaghetti squash plants that are coming up. They store very well and popped up right away. So we have to keep this watered much more, especially with those dry spells that we were having. But so far in our extra garden, everything's doing great. As you can see, our garden is not perfect, but hopefully it inspires you to get out there and grow something yourself. We have more videos coming up of some harvest in August. Check out this video next and remember to live free and find your purpose.